Good morning. A special welcome to our guests and visitors. It's always a pleasure to have you worshiping with us. This week we are starting a new series, Meaningful Ministry, and our theme is not glee and gratitude, but rejection and resentment. We are called as God's people to go out into the world to proclaim his good news. And sometimes people will be excited to hear that salvation news. That is for them and for us. But we also may be rejected because of it. They may shun us away. But we continue to proclaim God's word and his truth and purity because that's what God wants us to do. So we ask God to bless our worship today and we begin with our opening hymn. You may remain seated. We continue with the baptismal invocation and confession. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Savior Jesus Christ commanded baptism when he said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. All of us are born into this world with a deep need for baptism. From our parents, we inherit a sinful nature. We are without true fear of God and true faith in God and are condemned to eternal death. But while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He took away our sin by giving his life on the cross. In baptism, he clothes us with the robe of his righteousness and gives us a new life. We recall what baptism means for our daily lives. 
Baptism means that the sinful nature in us should be drowned by daily sorrow and repentance, and that all its evil deeds and desires be put to death. It also means that a new person should daily arise to live before God in righteousness and purity forever. As baptized children of God, we confess our sins. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray. God, have mercy on me, a sinner. God saved us through the washing of rebirth and the renewal by the Holy Spirit and unified us to the death and resurrection of Jesus. Every day, God forgives your sins, removes your guilt, and strengthens you to defeat Satan's power. His promise is for you and your children, and he will never forsake you. Your sins are forgiven. You are clothed with Christ. You are at peace with God now and forever. Amen. The Gospel according to St. Mark, people were bringing little children to Jesus for him to place the hands on them. But the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, placed his hand on them, and bless them. Can you lean over? Lean over. A little further if you can. There you go. There you go. Thanks. Jeremiah Martin Murphy, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Receive the sign of the cross on the head and on the heart to make you, you as a one redeemed by Christ the crucified. The Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has given you the new birth of water in the Spirit and has forgiven all your sins. May he strengthen you with his grace all the days of your life. Peace be with you. Let us pray. We give thanks, most merciful Father, that you have received Jeremiah as your own child and made him a member of Christ's body and the church. Now we pray, grant to him and to all your church on earth that being dead to sin, we may live to righteousness and being buried with Christ into his death, we may also share in his resurrection so that with all your saints, we may inherit eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I now ask the congregation to please stand.
can continue with the psalm. The first reading for today is Ezekiel chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. This will serve as our sermon text for today. The Lord sends Ezekiel to prophesy to the Israelites, knowing that most will not be grateful for the prophet's message, but resentful. He said to me, Son of man, stand up on your feet, and I will speak to you. As he spoke, the Spirit came into me and raised me to my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. He said, Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have been in revolt against me to this very day. The people to whom I am sending you are obstinate and stubborn. Say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. And whether they listen or fail to listen, for they are rebellious people, they will know that a prophet has been among them. And you, Son of man, do not be afraid of them. Or their words. Do not be afraid, though briars and thorns are all around you, and you live among scorpions. Do not be afraid of what they say, or be terrified of them, though they are a rebellious people. You must speak my words to them, whether they are listening or fail to listen, for they are rebellious. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is 2 Timothy 2, verses 1 to 13. St. Paul's ministry resulted in him being chained like a criminal, yet God's word cannot be chained. 
You then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to a reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. Join with me in suffering, like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one serving a soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs, but rather tries to please his commanding officer. Similarly, anyone who competes as an athlete does not receive the victor's crown except by competing according to the rules. The hard-working farmer should be the first to receive a share of the crop. Reflect on what I am saying, for the Lord will give you insight into all this. Remember, Jesus Christ raised from the dead, descending, descended from David. This is my gospel, for which I am suffering even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But God's word is not chained. Therefore endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Here is a trustworthy saying, If we died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we disown him, he will also disown us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot disown himself. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. We join in saying that together. Alleluia. You must speak my words to them, whether they listen or fail to listen. Alleluia. The gospel reading for today is Mark chapter 6, verses 1 to 6. Many in Jesus' hometown rejected his ministry. Jesus left there and went to his hometown accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. Where did this man get these things, they asked? What's this wisdom that has been given to him? What are these remarkable miracles he is performing? Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son and the brothers of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simeon? Aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not welcome, will not honor, except in his own town among his relatives and in his own home. He could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. Then Jesus went around teaching from village to village. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Join us in our next hymn.
grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who sends us out with his word to proclaim it to the nations, no matter how gleeful or gratitude, how grateful they may be, and mercy and love. Amen. What would it be like to be a representative of Jesus? What would, be, what would it be like to be sent out on behalf of the Lord to proclaim his word to the people? You might expect people to come far and wide, you know, to hear this wonderful news, to rejoice in the message that is proclaimed. Maybe you think of Pentecost when thousands came to faith and were baptized because of the proclamation of God's word. Well, what joy, what excitement. But do people always receive the word this way? No. We live in a sinful world where people are hardened in their hearts, where they want to live their life the way they want to. Again, we would expect people to be joyful and have gratitude in their heart. But today we'll see that they don't always have that. As we proclaim that word, we might face rejection and we might face resentment. The scene that we see today is the, the, the scene of, of a man by a river sitting there, and it's known as the Kabar River. And as he sat there, you know, he, he sees this vision of, of sorts that is revealed in chapter 1. And this river is connected to a, a river in the Babylonian territory. As he's sitting there, he sees this vision of these four angels with four different heads with four wings, and then there's wheels connected with eyes, and then there's a platform with a throne above it. And on that throne is the Lord of glory. We hear, I saw that from what appeared to be his waist, up, up he looked like glowing metal, as if full of fire. And that was from there down, he looked like fire, and brilliant light surrounded him. Like the appearance of a rainbow in the clouds on a rainy day, so was the radiance around him. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. When I saw it, I fell face down, and I heard the voice of one speaking. So Ezekiel sees this kind of revelation-type image in chapter 1, and there on that throne is a, a, the Lord, the Lord God, in his glory, in his radiance. And essentially, Ezekiel, before the Lord, does what any sinful person would do and fall to their hands and knees, face down, and bowing before the Lord himself. But as he's there, the Lord speaks to him. He says, Son of man, stand up on your feet, and I will speak to you. As he spoke, the Spirit came into me and raised me to my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. You might notice the, what the Lord calls Ezekiel. He uses the phrase, son of man. And you might be kind of like, why, why doesn't he call him Ezekiel? Well, the son of man is kind of a reference to the son of Adam. Here is Ezekiel, a sinful man corrupted by na nature. Here is a man who was created by God to serve God. And here is Ezekiel before this Lord, his maker. And the Lord calls upon him. He uses this phrase three times in our reading, and he uses it about 90 times throughout the entire book. So he's trying to remind Ezekiel, who am I? I am the Lord. Who are you? You are a son of Adam, a man. And before the Lord continues, he, he sends his spirit upon Ezekiel. And Ezekiel does not stand by his own power, but the spirit comes in him, helps him stand before the God to hear the commands of the Lord, to hear what the Lord had to say for his direction and his pur purpose. We hear, Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites, to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me, they and their ancestors have been in revolt against me to this very day. The people to whom I am sending you are obstinate and stubborn. 
You know, the Lord was sending Ezekiel to a people Ezekiel knew very well. Ezekiel knew these people well because they were his own people. People who were in exile in Babylon for about five years. And if you realize or not, Ezekiel was at the age of 30 about this time when he would have been starting his priestly duties if they were still in Jerusalem. But now he's in exile and the Lord is still calling upon him to serve. To serve the people the Lord knew well, to serve the people that were the Lord's children who rebelled and were obstinate to the Lord. And the Lord uses some harsh language with these people. You know, they, they, they hardened their hearts. They, they, they walked not in the way of the Lord as they should. You know, but Ezekiel was to go to these people. He was to proclaim the message of, of judgment, but also salvation. You know, it would be a daunting task, would it not? You know, here are the people that, you know, worshipped other idols, worshipped other gods, were into their own ways and passions and their own sinful lifestyles. And here, now, here's Ezekiel having to talk to them, these people who were already punished. But no matter how obstinate, no matter how stubborn, no matter how stuck in their ways, the Lord continues to reach out to these people. He continues to reach out to them in love. And Ezekiel was only supposed to say what the Lord wanted him to say. It wasn't Ezekiel's words. It was the Lord's. We are told, say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. It, it was a good reminder for Ezekiel as he went out to these people that he wasn't speaking, again, his words, but God's words. He was simply the messenger. He was just relaying what was told to him. This is what God wants you to know. This is what God wants to say to you. No matter how much you may not like it or enjoy it, this is his word. This is his warning for you. You know, you think about their exile, and you can kind of understand why they were there, why the Lord would banish them, why the Lord would punish them for their unbelief and their wayward ways. But we hear, and whether they listen or fail to listen, for they are rebellious people, they will know that a prophet has been among them. So no matter, Ezekiel, no matter how much you proclaim this word, some may receive it with eager and repentant hearts, others may not. And they may reject you, but they will know, no matter how much they reject you, they will know it's the word of the Lord they will know that you are a prophet of mine, that I have sent you out. They will not be able to deny that at all. They will not be able to stand on that last day and say, Lord, you didn't say anything to me. Oh, but I sent Ezekiel to you. I told you. I warned you. I, I wanted to love you as my lambs. I wanted to love you as my children, but you did not want it. You think about other prophets and people who spoke for the Lord. It wasn't just Ezekiel who had to be this kind of spokesperson, no. You have people like Elijah, Moses, Isaiah, Jeremiah, the prophets, the judges, right? But these people still had to speak to idolaters, people who lived their lives of sin. Maybe you think of what the Lord warned Moses in Exodus 3. They will forsake me and break the covenant I made with them. And in that day I will become angry with them and forsake them. I will hide my face from them and they will be destroyed. Many disasters and calamities will come on them. And in that day they will ask, Have not these disasters come on us because our God is not with us? And I will certainly hide my face in that day because all their wickedness in turning to other gods. Or, or maybe you think of Elijah and what he had to say to the people. Elijah went before the people and said, How long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. But the people said nothing. You know, the people were obstinate for generations. 
They lived in their sin. They didn't always walk in the way of the Lord. And again, if you read through Judges and all of that, you see they fell in sin. The Lord reached out to them. They repented. They lived in the Lord's ways. And then they fell into sin again. And he would send a judge. And this process happened over and over. God sending these spokesmen. Would you be a little nervous to be Ezekiel? (laughs) I mean, there's a lot of times when Ezekiel didn't have a a pleasant message to give or in a way that he had to give it. (laughs) But remember, who is in control? We hear, And you, son of man, do not be afraid of them or their words. Do not be afraid, though briars and thorns are all around you. And you live among scorpions, do not be afraid of what they say or be terrified by, by them, though they are a rebellious people. You know, Ezekiel didn't have to be afraid, no matter how much they rejected him, or rather rejected his word, God's word. He didn't have to fear being afraid if they take his life or anything like that because God was in control. Would it hurt to be planting in God's garden? Yes. There would be thorns and briars and scorpions. I think if we lived in Arizona, we'd understand the concept a little bit better of scorpions or maybe understand it for our own lives. But I don't know about you. I, I've been working in my garden throughout the years and uh, I'll find these little nests in the ground And as I'm pulling out weeds, a bunch of wasps will come out of the ground and they might sting me at times. Is that pleasant? No. Does it hurt? Yes. But imagine working for the Lord. You work in his garden. As you're ministering to people, there are these wasps, these people that will sting, that will hurt. It won't be pleasant. But the Lord says, do not fear them. Do not worry Because whose hand are you under? Whose hands are you in? You're in the Lord's hands. He is the one guiding you and protecting you. He is the one who will work everything out to your your eternal benefit. And maybe you die in, in the proclamation of Jesus. Maybe you're in prison for it. But you're saved by grace. You're saved by Jesus. You're saved by the Lord. In his control. Maybe we can think of other people who have been spokesmen for the Lord. Maybe you think about Paul, right? Who he went out and proclaimed Jesus in the synagogues. And they beat him and left him half dead on, on the roads. He was in prison for the name of Jesus. But he continued to be a spokesman for the Lord. Because that's what the Lord called him to do. Maybe you think about new pastors that are getting calls. You know, these new pastors that got a call this year will be sent out to their new churches, most likely here this month or, or, or next month. You know, the, these young pastors are eager and excited to tell others about Jesus. They, they want to tell others about the salvation Jesus has won for them. And they're thinking, you know, as I get to my congregation, people are going to want to work with me, to hear God's word. They will be nice to each other. They will be eager to do whatever they can for the name of God. But then they get to the congregations and they realize they're working with sinful people. They realize people don't always get along. They realize not everyone wants to hear what the pastor has to say. He realizes that not everyone wants to hear about Jesus. He'll get doors slammed in his face, phone calls dropped, and all of that. He'll quickly realize he's in a sinful world, in a rebellious nation, rejected and resented. But then he also realizes that he is also a son of man, that he doesn't deserve to go out and proclaim God's word that he doesn't deserve to be a spokesman or a messenger of God. He he, he realized it is only by the grace of Jesus that he goes and proclaims Jesus to others. But the pastor is not alone in proclaiming the word. God sends all of us out, does he not? 
In the Great Commission, he tells us to go and proclaim Jesus, to teach the nations, to baptize children and adults and all people of all nations, of all walks of life. This is our calling. But do you come across resentment and rejection for the name of Jesus? Maybe you encounter this with family members or, or friends or co-workers. When, when you mention Jesus or you're going to church, you get ridiculed. Oh, I'm going to church on the 4th of July weekend. Why would you do that? That doesn't make any sense. Maybe it would be easier in your own mind to say, you know, I'm just going to leave it alone. <laughs> I just want to be... <laughs> Like one of the prophets that, you know, Lord, I, I, I don't want to go speak to these people. Maybe we get concerned like Elijah and say, you know, Lord, I'm the only one left, Lord. There's no other believers besides me. But then the Lord reminds him, there are more. There are more. It's tempting not to deal with the sinful world. But God calls us to do this. God calls us to speak in love and care to the broken, the hurting, the struggling, the lost. Because we ourselves were lost. Remember what the Lord said to Ezekiel, You must speak my words to them, whether they listen or fail to listen, for they are rebellious. Yes, we're in a rebellious world. We will encounter rebellious people, but that does not change our mission. That does not change our focus. We continue to proclaim Jesus because Jesus was proclaimed to us. Lord, forgive us when I have cowered in fear of talking to others about you. Lord, forgive me when I've been fearful to say what other people need to hear, no matter how harsh it may sound, because it is your law, it is your word, not mine. I am not speaking for me, but I'm speaking for you. Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on us when we have not stood up for your word. We're not the only ones who are rejected as we proclaim God's word. It is to be expected. <laughs> Jesus himself was rejected as he proclaimed that word in our gospel. Where did this man get these things, they asked. What's this wisdom that has been given him? What are these remarkable miracles he is performing? Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simeon? Aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Think about all the religious leaders that rejected Jesus. You know, here's the word of God being proclaimed from the mouth of the Lord. And they didn't want anything of it. They didn't want anything to do with it. Lord, have mercy on them. Lord, have mercy on us. Here is the Savior who came into the world for sinners like us. Sinners who, who don't always walk in the way of the Lord. Who, who walk in our own ways, in our own paths, in our own desires, just along with the rest of the world. Here the Lord proclaims His law. To the lost. Here the Lord proclaims that He sent Jesus to die for the sins of the world. <laughs> you know, this 4th of July weekend, you, you think about our nation or other nations and peoples. It's been for generations that many have not walked in the ways of the Lord. <laughs> there are many people who once knew Jesus but no longer walk in his ways, or, or people who do not know him at all, or never had. But again, God gives us our time of grace on earth to share this message with them. That They may be obstinate, they may reject it, but the Spirit still works. The Spirit still works in their hearts as well as ours. The Spirit worked in our hearts through our baptism and through that water and that word so that we could believe so that we could have forgiveness of sins, so that we could have life with him because Jesus is the one who died on the cross for us to take us from our lost paths, to make us straight on his ways and to proclaim his word to the world. 
You think about Jeremiah's baptism today. You know, what a blessing. Isn't that why we exist as a church, is to proclaim that word so that more people come to faith? in Jesus so that more people, children, and adults join God's family. That's why we exist. That's why we serve. You might get scared. You might get stung. But no God is in control. No God is guiding you through your life. Have confidence that no matter if you're like the pastors in Pakistan or elsewhere in the world, you know, you have Jesus. You have the Lord. You have his grace and mercy. And maybe we should pray, as we always do, for help and guidance. And what a blessing it is to have prayer as such as this, asking God for help in our mission. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, you have called us to go into all the world and preach this good news of Jesus who lived, died, and rose for us. We sometimes are afraid of those we need to speak to. Curb our fears and worries. Give us the confidence to speak your truth in love. Bless our pastors' work in your name when they tell others of your grace and mercy. Bless your people and give them the confidence to proclaim this truth in love to their families and members. As these people hear the word, guide your spirit so that they may believe and repent. Guide them so we may walk in your ways, O Lord. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God which transpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. We join in confessing our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Hear my voice when I call, O Lord. Be merciful and answer me. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty, eternal, and righteous God, you revealed your divine word to teach us what we should do and what we should avoid. Strengthen and lead us by your Holy Spirit that we serve you in new obedience here until we come to complete holiness before you in that life to come. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we join to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. You may be seated. We conclude with our closing hymn. Good morning. Good morning. A special welcome to our guests and visitors. It's always a pleasure to have you. If you have any questions about our congregation, feel free to reach out and I'll be happy to help you. Uh, Jeremiah and your family you can stick around and do photos and stuff afterwards as you feel free. Uh, also, there's one announcement. We are hoping to have a special song at the end of the month here on Sunday. Uh, if there's uh, some people that would like to be part of that choir that's going to be singing part of the, the closing hymn, uh, please speak with Elise or, or Jason Kirshner. Uh, and they would be happy to help you kind of figure things out. I think there's going to be a practice after the service here, probably up in the balcony. So if you are interested in that, just stick around and um, gather some information that way. Other than that, I hope everyone had a, a blessed holiday and all of that, and you had safe travels. And uh, what a blessing it is to worship with all of you today. And God willing, I hope to worship with you next week. Have a blessed week.